Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And it is with great honor that I am presenting at the International Conference on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's Diseases and Related Neurological Disorders. So the topic uh, today that uh, I'll be going over is the effect of diabetes status on the relationship between cognitive decline and all-cause mortality. And uh, on this project, I uh, worked uh, with my current uh, doctoral student, uh, John Hu, and um, he has provided um, uh, uh, assistance and guidance in, in preparation for this. So. Um, Let's talk about um, what we are going to be going over here. And so um, before that, of course, there's no disclosures uh, to report. Um, and then so let's take a look at some key statistics before we get started um, looking at the percentage of people that have diabetes. So if we look at the general population ages 65 and older, um, in this population, 25% of people um, have diabetes. So this is something, um, cognitive decline, uh, dementia, uh, these are something um, sh that should be considered um, when we're looking at certain age groups that should be considered within the context of diabetes if a quarter of the individuals have this. Um, not only that, we know uh, for sure that pathophysiologically diabetes is not only directly um, injuring the blood vessels and, and not only those um, throughout your body but within your brain um, uh, potentially causing um, endothelial damage um, and also secondarily um, insulin in itself excessive insulin can cause uh, uh, damage in the vessels but then also inflammation so neuroinflammation is an extremely important area to um, focus more on uh, as a common pathway, potential common pathway uh, between understanding diabetes um, and, and cognitive decline. So um, if we were to characterize this um, in the form of a model, um, this is the PRISM model, um, which is characterized uh, within my um, own website. Um, and it's a three-tiered uh, model, uh, which looks at um, one variable, so cognitive decline versus overall mortality, but then also looking at a third layer, um, and it, which in this case, um, we're looking at the chronicity of uh, diabetes. Um, so methodology, um, we looked at a uh, robust nationally representative data set um, known as NHANES. Um, it's National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Um, and so we uh, looked at, um, because the data was available, uh, we looked between the years of 1999 and 2002. Uh, but then what we did is try to look for mortality outcomes into December 2015. Um, what is present in 2015 are the um, mortality outcomes which can be linked um, to the original 1999 to 2002 um, uh, variables, which allows for longitudinal long-term predictions of outcomes. And we harnessed the ability to do this um, in, in, in um, coming up with our findings. So uh, diabetes status was something that was considered from self-reported data. Um, and then in our methodology, we used um, something called um, Cox regression. Um, and so multivariable Cox regression was used to um, understand this. And so I'm going to show you the outcomes um, and the results um, in this slide. So looking um, from the left to the right, um, if we look at diabetes alone, now diabetes alone we know is causing poor health outcomes. Specifically in our population that we studied, it was two times more likely um, if you had diabetes than the general population. But then, if you looked at diabetes, individuals that had both diabetes and lower cognitive function, these individuals actually had as high as three times higher 
um, mortality outcomes than the general population. Now this is telling. This is an important finding, which is what we focused on um, in, in our study. So it was really interesting that um, these findings, when we applied it separately in Caucasians, and then we applied it separately in African Americans, um, similar patterns did not exist. So there were different patterns um, by race. So race is actually modifying this effect. So what does that tell us? That tells us that when we're thinking about preventative measures, when we're thinking about addressing uh, cognitive decline, it is really important to screen for diabetes because there is actually individuals that are walking around with undiagnosed diabetes. So we really need to not only better manage diabetes um, when people have cognitive decline or, or dementia, but also uh, try to look for um, screening diabetes better as well. So a combination of all of these will result in um, uh, better outcomes uh, within the population. Thank you for listening.